Amen. Thank you very much. Will you pray with me, please? Holy and all-loving God, once more we enter into this holy place seeking to draw nearer to you. We ask that you be with each and every one of us this day that you speak into our hearts, our minds, and our souls so that we may know you as our God. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. You know, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is when? When will it stop hurting? When Will things be better? When will I see a difference? And the big one, when is God going to show up and do something about all this? And the one thing all of those questions have in common is that there is no good answer. Or I should say, I can rarely give the answer that somebody really wants, which is a specific time. When will it stop hurting? Well, I cannot, I cannot tell you, well, tomorrow at 10.30. You know, when will things be better? No one should say, oh, Friday at 4. And when is God going to show up and take care of things? Well, actually, that one is a little different. For there is an answer. And that is that God is always with us. I mean, that is one of the bedrocks of our faith. That God is is with us through all the times and seasons of our lives, and that if we would allow ourselves to be open to God's presence then we will know this to be true, even when things get rough. And we seek to do this through prayer and quiet time, through the words and actions of our families and friends, and in worship, when we pray together and sing together and take part in communion together. I mean, how many people are moved every single Sunday when we sing Standing on Holy Ground? I mean, every single time. I mean, it's a good song, but it's not the individual words that move us over and over and over again. Something happens during that time. God happens during that time, we could say. So yes, God is with us all the time. And sometimes it is as obvious as standing on holy ground. And other times we need to be still and and listen. And then there are those times when heaven breaks loose and we are suddenly in an amazing and wonderful world where mystery and miracle, signs and wonders, golden gates and streets of pearl suddenly appear before us. There are times when God really does show up, turns our world upside down, and shows us what grace and glory really look like. In Celtic Christianity, during the golden age of saints, when people like St. Alban and St. Bridget, St. Patrick, were influential in the church, the concept of thin spaces took hold in Christianity. And these are spaces all around us where that space between what is heavenly and what is earthly grows thin. And we might be able to see life a little differently through it. Not bound by our myopic view of only what is tangible and what I can see and touch in front of me. 
but rather an infinite view of all there is, where God's grandeur abounds and angels are all around us. The thing about these thin spaces is that you, you can't plan a trip to one. You know, we cannot go looking for them and find them. They find us. Just like the answer to some of those questions about when, no one can tell you. It will tell you when it's time. And the thin space that allows us to experience what previously had been unimaginable, they will find you too. A thin space found Isaiah this morning. When we read about his mystical experience in the temple one day, you know, I do not think Isaiah was expecting what happened to him this morning, nor do I think anyone could have told him that it was about to happen. Only God knew what was going to happen. And when Isaiah walked in and started praying, like he had done countless times before, this time his whole world changed and he was never the same afterwards. What was Isaiah praying for that day? Well, we don't really know. But we are given a clue when it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, you see, King Uzziah, he was a really good king. I mean, he reigned over the kingdom of Judah for over 50 years. And during that time, there was peace and prosperity like the people had not seen since the time of Solomon. And he was faithful to God and did what was right in the eyes of God. And, and, the, and the people followed him in these good ways. And, and life was pretty good for a long time. Well, now it says King Uzziah is dead. And that meant political upheaval and uncertainty. Will the new king be any good? Will peace and prosperity stay with us? Will God continue to look favorably upon our nation? I mean, I can imagine those things were on Isaiah's mind when he began to pray that morning. And then suddenly the doors of his perception were opened wide and he found himself not just in the temple anymore, but in the throne room of the Lord, where the Lord was sitting high up on a throne and his, and his robe filled the entire room. And seraphs, whatever they are, they each had six wings, and they're tending to the Lord. And they sang out to one another, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth is full of God's glory. And Isaiah, a little overwhelmed, I would say, is speechless at what is going on, what he's suddenly seeing. And when he finally does find words, he bows down and says, Lord, I am not worthy to be in your presence you are God, and I am just a mortal, flawed and feeling guilty, it says. Even at my best, I am imperfect. And then, in this imperfect state of humility, Isaiah receives God's healing touch and a blessing beyond belief. Isaiah will now speak for God. Speak God's divine words to the people who will indeed will be led astray by their new ruler. So far astray that the only words on the people's lips will be, when will God show up and take care of this? And Isaiah, now anointed by God, he will be there with the people to counsel them and help them get through trying times and ultimately leading them back to the life that God had already prepared for them. 
All of that happened when Isaiah walked in to pray at the temple one day. And unbeknownst to him, the Lord had already opened a thin space in that temple through which the two could meet. The encounter between Jesus and Peter is another example of heavenly abundance breaking into the normalness of our lives. Peter has been out fishing all night long and and has caught nothing, which means his family won't have anything to eat. You know, he won't be able to sell any of his fish and then go buy the things he needs. You know, a whole ripple effect of negative consequences are going to be put into motion all because Peter failed at his job that night. At no fault of his own, others will be affected. I mean, he did try. I mean, it says he was out all night long trying. He just didn't have any success. And into this scene, Jesus arrives and tells Peter to cast his nets out once more. You know, and Peter, I imagine, already feeling a little dejected, a little down over his failure to catch anything, you know, he tells Jesus at first it's not worth it. You know, I've been out all night long trying to catch fish, but there's nothing out there. And Jesus says, Go out into the deep water this time and try again there. And Peter, not necessarily believing that this will work, but trusting Jesus, goes out to where it is deep, casts his nets, and brings in so many fish it nearly sinks the boat. For you see, in what Peter was first experiencing as a place of failure and lots of hard work that didn't pay off, when he trusted in Jesus, what was deep water became another thin space where the abundance of God's grace overflowed into those nets. And not only was Peter transformed, but an entire community would benefit as well. You know, Peter, knowing darn well that there was no fish out there, followed Jesus' advice and received more than he could ever ask for or imagine. We are like that sometimes, aren't we? You know, we try all sorts of things in our lives and, and often it seems that nothing works. Nothing changes. You know, we work hard but still can't seem to make it all end in the end, meet in the end. You know, we are faithful both in our prayers and in our actions toward others and yet the world still seems scary and large pockets of need continue to go unmet. You know, we do all sorts of things at church, but fewer people come in. Not today, evidently. But, (laughs) you know, our budgets are tight, and it seems the world is changing and demographics are leaving us behind. And it would be very easy to become a little depressed and even despondent, you know, that the good old days are just that. Old. No longer here in the present. And no longer an indicator of our future. And yet, we continue. We continue to do more. Why? Because we know that the good old days are just that. Good old days. You know, and if that were, then they were good. But if we want a bright future, we need to look to God, not backwards 
and trust that God has at least one more thing in store for us. You know, we need to be willing to do that one more thing. To go out deep somewhere, you know, beyond where we normally do our fishing. And follow God's call. You know, I cannot promise you that if you do that, six-winged seraphs will appear in your house one day. (laughs) That would be neat. And nor can I promise that, you know, we might try very hard at things in life, but still not see the results we're expecting. I can promise, however, that if the goal of our lives is to be connected to God and to trust God so that even when we think things should be going another way, we don't have to worry ourselves to death about it. So if those are the only two things that we can accomplish in life, then I can promise you that life is worth the living and that maybe, just maybe, we can leave all our worries behind and simply follow Jesus. Amen. 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 Will you pray with me, please? Gracious and eternal God, you have raised up your name and your word above everything. Your steadfast love endures forever. In a world where every day some division or strife arises somewhere, we bring you our prayers for others and for ourselves. We pray that your holy comfort, may it heal the lonely, bind up the brokenhearted, bring peace to those who mourn, calm to the fearful, and joy to those who celebrate. Lord, make your presence known to all who call upon your name and bless us as we seek to live our lives in worship and service to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 And now, my friends, let us take a moment of silence and allow that healing comfort of God to work upon us.